This is Radio Ecoshock with your host, Alex Smith. When the Arctic sea ice crashed in 2007, it was a great signal of human interference in the climate of this planet. Now, Swiss researchers have found another. Beginning in 2010, giant heat waves appeared in multiple places around the Earth at the same time. Dr. Marco Fogel is a postdoctoral researcher of land climate dynamics at ETH Zurich, the Swiss Federal Institute of Science and Technology. She is co-author of a paper, still awaiting publication, but already causing waves. Although based in Zurich, we reached Marta in Budapest. Marco Fogel, welcome to Radio EcoShock. Hello, good afternoon. Tell us about the massive heat experienced in many places around the Northern Hemisphere in 2018, please. We were investigating the areas which were concurrently affected by hot extremes in 2018 in the Northern Hemisphere. Multiple regions in the Northern Hemisphere experienced heat-related impacts at the same time. What we were doing then was to consider hot days in key agricultural and densely populated regions in the Northern Hemisphere because these are the regions which can be strongly exposed to extreme heat. We computed the areas which were concurrently affected by hot days in 2018. We found that there was a large area. And if we're considering the area that was affected between May and July in 2018, we found that it was an average 22% of the northern hemispheric region, which is a densely populated or key agricultural region. If you are looking at this 22% from 2018, which were on average affected every day between May and July, this makes a new record. So if you are considering these areas from uh, 1958 to 2018, there was a strong increase in the recent state. And also in 2010, we had a large area that was affected by concurrent extreme heat. But um, 2018 makes a new record if you are considering the area between May and July. So during these times, I mean, we had things like rails melting and, and uh, there were heat deaths uh, and some crop failures. So th- there are a lot of ramifications to what you're describing. Yes, that's why we think it's really necessary to look at the areas which are actually affected. Because if you have uh, key agricultural regions and densely populated areas, this can have strong implications. We collected media articles and we found that in at least 17 countries across the Northern Hemisphere, multiple impacts were reported. We found this damages to infrastructure, but also crop failure in Central Europe, in the United Kingdom, and then also in other regions. And even lots of people were directly affected by extreme heat and heat deaths were reported in Japan and South Korea also. It's interesting because each of us experiences the heat. We had a very hot year here in British Columbia, and we had a lot of wildfires. But we don't put it together as a world picture, and I wonder who is responsible for tracking heat and and finding what you found. This is really the main message from our study, that we have this strong impact, which occurred in many regions at the same time, and this can then have strong implications. You mentioned the fires in uh, British Columbia, and also there were lots of wildfires in Scandinavia. If we experience such events more often in the future, and one country already has a lot, uh, large areas which are affected by fires, and, and another country also calls for emergency, and there can be limited um, infrastructure to actually fight the fires. And therefore, we considered a multi-model ensemble from state-of-the-art model simulation and computed probabilities of such large areas to have occurred in the case with climate change, and in a case without climate change. And here we focus on a historical period where we experience the climate change signal to be small. And when we are doing so, we actually find that in this historical period where we think that the climate change signal was small, that such large areas like 2018 never occur. So this leads to the conclusion that actually human-induced climate change was necessary for such an event to occur. So in 2018, like heat wave area, could not have occurred without human-induced climate change. It's interesting, though, that some of your earlier research that you co-authored brings up a question because you looked into the year 1540 and what appeared to be a very hot time then, and now, 500 years later, we have another series of heat waves. 
And as soon as I looked at news of your research, because it hasn't been published yet, is that correct? Not published yet? Yeah, it's still under review, yeah. Yeah. It's minor revision, so um, it's in the process. As soon as I heard about it, I thought about the 2010 heat wave where Russia, one of the world's largest wheat exporters, suffered so much crop loss that they canceled grain exports. And I was thinking, well, what if North America also lost wheat to heat at the same time, there could have been a food crisis, possibly even famine. Does your new research suggest perhaps we're entering an age where multiple food failures could occur? Actually, our results can point into this direction because we investigated also climate model projections for the future and we found that in a case where we have two degree global warming, such an area like 2018 could occur on average nearly every year. So if you imagine that the 2018-like area would occur on average every year, this can have strong implications, for example, on food security. So if you have multiple bread baskets where we have crop failure at the same time, then this can also um, have strong implications on trade. And trade cannot face these um, crop failure because when they occur in multiple regions at the same time, and this can then have actually strong implications on food security. And also, if we consider, like many areas concurrently affected by wildfires, then we can also get a problem with um, infrastructure to actually fight the fires. Our results show that under one degree warming, such an area like 2018 could occur one out of six years. So even today, it's not unlikely, but it was still an unprecedented event. If we go in future, for 1.5 degree global warming, then we find that every two out of three years such an event could occur. And if you go then even to two degree global warming, for such an event could occur nearly every year on average. So that means we could find uh, such a year um, like 2018 could occur nearly every year. And then also it would be more difficult to compensate last year's failure if the next year again the large area will be under extreme heat. So this can have really strong implications because if you have it as a year like one out of six years, then the, the other years you might compensate the losses from one year. But if such an event would occur nearly every year on average, then we can expect strong impacts. So we would possibly have no time to recover from the damages the year previous. Marta Fogel, based on earlier science you co-authored, is it possible heat events are also due or affected by large-scale land use changes in Europe and across the mid-latitudes? Heat waves can have uh, multiple um, causes, and we find that there's like looking situation is necessary to large uh, heat waves to occur, but then also processes on land really um, can amplify the development of heat waves. So what we were focusing on our research group is really the climate dynamics or land atmosphere feedbacks. And also if you have land use change and then we um, change, for example, from forest to grass, so moisture and uh, latent heat flux and therefore can also influence uh, the development of heat waves. Canadian government scientists just released a report saying Canada is warming at twice the global average In earlier work, your group says Central Europe is also expected to warm more strongly than the world average. First of all, for our international audience, what is meant by Central Europe? And second, why would that region warm more than many other places? Actually, um, when we are talking about global uh, warming or global mean temperature, whole uh, world and all areas on land, we have a stronger increase in temperature than over the globe, because the globe is associated with strong regions, which are the ocean, and this, the ocean cools less strong than the, la- the land. So when we are looking on land regions, we always find a stronger warming signal than uh, or most areas on land. We find stronger warming than global mean temperature, because land warms faster than the ocean. It's interesting because people picture Switzerland as a cooler, mountainous place, but Switzerland was also struck by excessive heat last year? Yes, um, hot temperatures, and what was also the case for Switzerland was that it was a really dry year last year. And if you have a dry year, and which is accompanied by also like a hot and dry year, then there can be feedback process that accelerate the warming. And of course also, for example, um, crop harvest. You were tuned to Radio Ecoshock. My guest is uh, Dr. Marta Fogel from ETH Zurich. 
We are discussing brand new science about the massive heat waves appearing across the northern hemisphere in recent years. Marta, do you have any indication that this is purely a northern hemisphere phenomenon? Could it also happen in the southern hemisphere, or is there too much ocean there for this to occur? We were really focusing on northern hemisphere because we wanted to focus on the northern hemisphere spring and summer. But also in the southern hemisphere, there are strong uh, heat-related impacts there was a heat wave occurring. For example, Australia was also affected by strong heat. Uh, last year also, I think it was even ongoing until um, this year. But we really, because of the timing of summer and spring, we really focused on the northern hemisphere. Recently, you presented the new findings on simultaneous heat waves at the European Geosciences Union press conference in Vienna. Did you get feedback from other scientists? What are they saying? We have a novelty in our study that we were really... Um, investigating the area which was concurrently affected by hot extremes. And often if you are um, looking on heat waves, we consider on the magnitude or the duration. And this time we really um, considered the area which was concurrently affected by extreme heat. So in 2018, it might not be that there was one large heat wave, but in many regions at the same time there were heat waves. And I think the scientists, they found our, um, they were surprised by the results and they find it really a good idea to look at the area that was concurrently affected by hot extremes. Yes. Could you just describe one of those heat waves, whether it's 2010 or 2012 or 2018, and talk to us about where the heat appeared, what what countries, what regions? Okay. We were looking in 2018 on hot days, so the days that were much warmer than the 90% of the climatological period. And we focused on key agriculture and densely populated areas in the northern hemisphere because they can be strongly exposed to extreme heat. So the hot days we were considering, they were occurring in the U.S., in Canada, in many regions in Europe, like in in the U.K., in, in Scandinavia, including Finland, Sweden, Norway, and also in Denmark, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in Switzerland, in France, Portugal, also or really to the east in Asia, we were considering Japan and South Korea, where there was a large number of hot days in 2018. From the Swiss University ETH Zurich, we have been speaking with Dr. Marsha Vogel. She is co-author of a new paper, still in review, about multiple simultaneous heat events that have appeared since 2010. I will put links to an article about this in my show blog at ecoshock.org. Marta, thank you so much for speaking with us. Okay, thank you. No problem. (laughs) I'm Alex Smith for Radio Ecoshock. Check out the Radio Ecoshock website. We're at ecoshock.org.